Namaste friends. This month, the internet caught a fever. Not a real virus, but a mind virus called Vibecoin. And it started with a tweet. Someone built a SaaS app using Cursor and GPT-4 and got brutally hacked. But it didn't stop there. This vibe coding trend exploded. Twitter, YouTube, indie hackers. Everyone suddenly became a developer overnight. That tweet was a wake-up call. But what exactly is vibe coding? Let's break it down in this video. At its core, vibe coding is about embracing AI as your co-pilot and letting go of the need to understand every line of code. It's a mindset where you trust the large language models to generate your code. You use popular tools like Cursor, Windsurf to build fast and focus more on product management than engineering. You prioritize speed and experimentation over structure and maintainability. This movement gained traction after indie hacker Peter Levels created a low quality flight simulator MMO using JavaScript. He monetized it with in-game ads and made a fortune. Despite the app being buggy and chaotic, this inspired a wave of developers to follow suit, building fast and vibing hard. Vibe coding is not about writing perfect code. It's all about people building full-blown apps, purely by feel. You describe what you want in simple plain English, and tools like GPT-4, Copilot, Cursor, or DeepSeek spit out code for you fast, sometimes impressively fast. So you can build MVPs in days, not months. You don't need to understand every function. You just need to know what you want. No setup, no boilerplate, no stack overflow. You just vibe. And when it works, it feels magical. But here is the problem. English is not a programming language. You can say, build me a secure auth system. But unless you understand things like token expiry, permission boundaries, or rate limiting, there is no way to check if the AI actually did it right. The result, you get working code, but not good code. It runs, sure, but is it secure, scalable, maintainable? Often, it's just enough to fool yourself and your users into thinking it's production ready. I have two major issues with how wipe coding is happening right now. First, loss of context. AI models don't really know why you want something. They just generate what seems reasonable based on training data. If you are not a developer, you won't notice if the AI quietly adds a security flaw or introduces a race condition. Number two, working code is not a good code. There is a difference the code runs and this code is production ready. AI might generate something that works, but that doesn't mean it scales or is readable or secure. At best, it's a prototype. At worst, it's a breach waiting to happen. And this leads to disasters. People who have never written production grade code are now building real apps. Deploying them, tweeting, just wipe coded this SaaS with cursor, and then getting slammed by hackers. And the worst part, when things go wrong, like serverless abuse on AWS or leaked user data, you are on the hook. That's real money, real users, and real consequences. So, should you stop vibe coding? No, not at all. But here's the nuance. Vibe coding is actually great as a learning path. It's an entry point for curious minds, for non-devs who want to build things. But just don't confuse vibe coding with production development. There is no such thing as a vibe production engineer. Let that sink in. And here is what I recommend. If you are vibe coding, that's awesome. Use AI tools, build cool stuff, but keep it personal. Keep it local. Don't ship apps you don't understand. Don't advertise something unless you have actually reviewed the code. And please, don't deploy something to the public internet without knowing what it does. You want to move from AI builds it for me to I use AI as a tool, but I am still the engineer. Vibe coding is both a meme and a real shift in how software is being built. It reflects a future where AI writes most of the code and humans Focus on vision, structure, and product thinking. Done right, it can be powerful. Done wrong, it can be catastrophic. So don't let the I build this in two hours with GPT hype fool you. Software still needs real thinking. It still needs architecture, testing, security, and deep understanding. Wipe coding might get you started, but it won't take you all the way. For that, you need depth, you need mastery, and bite mark.